Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to run through the steps to dissect a sheep pluck. The sheep pluck contains a sheep heart, its lungs, and trachea, and it's all connected together. To help me make sense of everything that I'm seeing, I have this anatomical model next to it to compare to the human anatomy of things. I've got my tray lined with paper towel, I got my dissection tools, I got a couple pipe cleaners, which we'll see why we use those in a little bit. And, oh yeah, most importantly, make sure that you got your goggles on. So let's jump to the dissection tray and get started. All right, so the first thing is I want to cut this open. I'm going to cut the bag along the top here. You notice this is wrapped. Um, that's just to help preserve it. So we're going to unwrap this. And then I'm going to see if I can orient it so that it matches my model over here, which will help me kind of understand where different things are located. Now, all of the paper towel that this was wrapped in, I put that back in the plastic bag so that I can use that when I want to preserve this for the next lab period when we finish the dissection. So I'm going to turn this over, and one thing I should be able to find is the heart. The heart is here. You should see some dark tissue as well as kind of this lighter fat tissue around the heart. So that is fat that's kind of covered, covering the different parts of the heart there. You should also be able to find the trachea, and the trachea is going to have these sort of ridges or rings that are traveling up the trachea, so we should be able to find that. And then the lungs are going to be these kind of dark, big sections here um, that have these different kind of lumpy lobes. Now, we'll notice some differences. I can't get it lined up exactly. And one reason for that is this is of a human, and humans stand up. And this is for a sheep, and sheep walk on all fours. And so their heart location compared to you know where their lungs are is a little bit different. If you were looking at this, the sheep's head would be over here on this side, and the heart sort of hangs below and between the two lungs there. And we can compare that to human anatomy where the trachea is superior to the lungs and the heart is medial or between the two lungs. But all of the structures that we find in human anatomy should be present in the sheep anatomy as well. Just know that a few things will be located in slightly different areas. So if you find where the head of the sheep would be, this would be the head of the sheep, that means this is the sheep's right lung, this is the sheep's left lung. And there should be three lobes on the right lung. So I've got a lobe here, I've got a middle lobe, and I've got the upper lobe. So three lobes on the right lung, and then I should be able to find two lobes on the left lung. So one lobe and two lobes on that left lung. You also might notice that I'm not wearing gloves. It's totally fine to not wear gloves during this dissection, although if you're more comfortable wearing gloves, that's totally fine too. So you'll notice in this particular pluck there is no esophagus. We just have the trachea. The trachea is held open by these cartilage rings right here. And then we can, we can look through it. It is hollow. So here on the camera, we can see some of those cartilage rings there. See one right there pretty well. And we can cut open this trachea and get another view of some of those cartilage rings. And of course, those cartilage rings are there to hold the trachea open because we always need air to be able to flow in and out of the trachea um, as we're breathing. So what I'm going to do next is make an incision down the length of the trachea and see if I can see where it branches off into the two bronchi that lead to each lung. So let's go ahead and make that incision down the trachea, see if we can find those bronchi. And as I go, I'm looking for any branches off of the trachea, which I haven't found yet. One thing I did find though, there's a tiny little tube right there, if you can see that. I don't know what that is. I think that's probably um, maybe an artery or a vein of some sort. So you might see some other small tubes and stuff um, as we go here. I'm not sure what that is, though. Okay, so at this point, I found the first part where there's kind of a branch off of the trachea, and this is where it's going to differ a little bit from human anatomy. In human anatomy, the trachea goes down and it splits into two branches down here that we call the bronchi. But in the sheep anatomy, one of the lobes of the lung actually is provided by oxygen um, by another branch that separates from the trachea a little bit higher. In human anatomy, we don't have this branch right here. And you'll see as I squeeze this particular lobe of the lung, you'll see some juice come out of there. Now normally that's just going to be air that's in there, but since this is preserved in a solution, that's just some of that solution left over. Okay, so now I've kind of got to a part where it's going to split into two halves right here. There's going to be one tube that goes down this left side, and there's another tube that goes down this other side over here. 
on my human model, essentially I've gotten to this part right here where I've gotten one of the branches um, of the bronchi which goes into this lung and then you can't see it while well in the video where there's another branch that goes into the other lung right there. There's also just a lot of extra fat and things on here so I'm going to cut off some of that fat to make this a little bit easier to see. All right, so you can see those two branches or the two bronchi pretty well right there. I'm going to take one and try to travel down the length of that with the scissors and just see which parts of the lung it's going to go to. All right, so I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to try to travel down this um, one of these branches. So I'm just putting one end of the scissors into the tube and I'm going to see if we can travel down um, and cut into there and see where it takes us. And you see a lot of juice kind of draining out. It's good to let some of that juice sort of drain out there. So let's keep going. And we'll start to see a whole bunch more branches off, off of there. Now another thing you can do is do a cross section of part of the lung. So let me take this other half of the lung and I'm just gonna do a cross section of it and we can take a look and see what that looks like. And so you can see in this section of the lung, um, there's kind of a big hole right there, which is gonna be one of the bigger branches of those bronchi. And then you see lots of little holes. And so those little holes could be cross sections of little pulmonary veins, little pulmonary arteries. And eventually those end in alveoli, which are, are a little bit too small for us to see. But you can, what you can see is as I squeeze this, Every little spot where, where fluid is coming out, that's going to be where um, air or blood travels in the lung. And so we've got all of the lungs here. We've got all of this. We've got a lot of fat, all this white kind of fat tissue um, all around it. And then underneath it here, we've got the heart. So before we cut into the heart or cut the heart out of this, um, you can take your fingers and wrap around the heart like this. All of the blood that comes in and out of the heart is gonna travel through this section that I've got my fingers wrapped around right here. There's gonna, that's gonna include the pulmonary artery, the pulmonary vein, the aorta, and the vena cavas are all entering on that one side of the heart there. So one thing I like to do before we start cutting anything, because once you cut it, you can't put it back together, is to use my fingers or the scalpel and to start peeling back some of this tissue and see if I can isolate any of the blood vessels that are coming off of the heart. For example, if you can see this, I've isolated this blood vessel, and I don't know what that blood vessel is yet, but um, it's coming from the heart, and it's connected somewhere. So I can try to see, is this, is this connected to the lungs? And if it is connected to the lungs, that's gonna be one of my um, pulmonary arteries or veins. So I think I've found my five. I've got one up here, I've got one down there, one on this side, and then one here and one there. And those five are gonna to correspond to the pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, superior and inferior vena cava, and the aorta. So at this point, I think I'm ready to go ahead and cut the heart out. Um, whenever I cut the heart out, I like to cut as far from the heart as possible so we can really see these blood vessels that are coming out there. We can always cut it a little bit shorter if we need to. So I'm gonna cut through those blood vessels and detach the heart. So it kind of looks like a big mess at this point, um, but we're gonna to start to go through and try to decipher and figure out what each of these blood vessels are in our heart. I'm gonna set that aside for a second though. So I want to see now on the lungs if I can find where the pulmonary arteries and veins are. So I've got one right here that you can see. So that's going to be either the pulmonary artery or the pulmonary vein. And I found the entrance to another one which I've kind of cut maybe a little bit too much here. Right there. You can see if I put my finger into it, it's definitely entering into the lungs right there. So that's one of them, either the pulmonary artery or the pulmonary vein. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside then and we're gonna take a look at the heart. Now, identifying what is what on the heart can be pretty tricky. If you start with the heart like this though, so this is the right side of the heart, this is gonna be the right atrium, 
right here, and then the darker part will be the right ventricle. So right atrium, right ventricle. And then if you look at the other side, then you'll see the left part. So there's a left atrium, and then kind of going down to the apex down there is the left ventricle. So all this dark area right there is left ventricle. So right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. The entrances to the atria are going to be this area where there's kind of this darker tissue kind of wrapped around there. So this is going to be the entrance to one of the atria, and that would be, looks like the left atrium. And so the blood vessel connected to the left atrium would have to be the pulmonary veins. And I'm going to cut away real quick some of this fat so we can see a little bit better. Next what I want to do is I want to take and make my main incision around the heart. An incision down one side and up the other. I want to make sure that I go down here from the right atrium through the right ventricle, wrap around over the left ventricle, and then up into the left atrium. I want to make sure I hit all of those. So I'm going to kind of come across right through here and then up the other side. Here I am going over the apex of the heart. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna to try to open the heart, but I'm gonna hit some resistance because there's um, the septum of the heart, which runs down the middle of it that I'm gonna to have to cut through. So now I'm gonna use my scissors and start to cut through some of that septum in the middle, and it should start to open up a little bit more. There we go. and then it should start to kind of open up like this, and then we can see those chambers of the heart. You can also pull on it a little bit to get that to open up. So at this point, I'm ready to start identifying what some of these um, chambers are. So let me reorient myself here. I've got, this is the right side of the heart. This is the left side of the heart. The chamber that goes all the way down to the tip or the apex of the heart is always gonna be the left ventricle. So if you're ever trying to figure out where am I on the heart, that's one helpful clue. This is the left ventricle. And remember, the left ventricle always goes down and touches the apex. One thing that you'll notice is these kind of like string-like structures. These are called the chordae tendine. And I can actually hold up the whole heart by just grabbing one individual strand of the chordae tendine. They're really tough. I can support the whole of the heart just through that one string. Um, it does break if you pull on it too hard, though. So those are the chordae tendine that attach to the cuspid valves. This is the left ventricle, then this would be the bicuspid or mitral valve. And if this is the right ventricle, then these strings would be the heart strings or the chordae tendine of the tricuspid valve, the tricuspid valve right there. Now where are the atria? The atria, if you put your finger down through the valve, then you're gonna be in the atria. So for example, if I poke down through there, then I'm in there into the atria. So the atria are kind of down in there a little bit farther. So now I want to start to identify some blood vessels that I have here. And as I do that, I'm going to use a couple pipe cleaners to help me kind of organize what I'm doing. I'm going to go and do the left side first. So I'm going to start here. And there should be two places I can go through. I can go through the mitral or bicuspid valve right there, which takes me into the left atrium and out the other side of the heart. So I'm going to take my pipe cleaner. I'm going to use the red pipe cleaner because this is high oxygen blood on the left side. Poke that down through there. So this is going to have to be the pulmonary vein. And again, how I found the pulmonary vein for sure, I know the pulmonary vein brings oxygenated blood back to the heart. So I started on the left side of the heart. I put my finger down through the mitral valve out to the other side, and that's where I know this is the pulmonary vein carrying oxygen-rich blood into the left side of the heart. And so from here, that blood's gonna travel down into this ventricle, but then it's gotta get pumped out. So when this heart muscle squeezes, like that, whenever it's beating, it's gonna squeeze that out. So I'm gonna go from where I am toward the center right there, and this should take me out of the heart as well. So the blood travels kind of into the ventricle through here and gets pumped this way and out through the aorta. So wherever my finger is coming out on this side, that's my aorta. So the aorta of this heart is this blood vessel. It's kind of hard to see this blood vessel right there. 
where my finger is coming out right there. That's my aorta. I've kind of split the aorta in half a little bit um, right through there. So I'm going to take my pipe cleaner and I'm going to thread carefully my pipe cleaner through that part next to it so I can show the path of oxygen rich blood through the heart. That's going to help me identify parts of the heart here. So blood travels into the heart through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium through the bicuspid valve right there into the left ventricle from the left ventricle it's pumped out there's going to be the pulmonary semilunar valve in there you can't really see that very well but there's a valve there and it travels out of the heart through the aorta the aorta and the pulmonary artery are both going to be kind of medial in the heart pulmonary vein and the vena cavas will be on the sides of the heart. Once you put the pipe cleaners in there, it's a lot easier to identify if you know the path of blood flow through the heart. All right, let's do the right side real quick. It's a little bit trickier because the right side is smaller. I'm gonna look for those heart strings right there and find my tricuspid valve. And I'm gonna put my finger through the tricuspid valve. And Looks like this time my finger doesn't quite go all the way through, but I can see where it's about to poke through if my fingers are a little skinnier. Actually, maybe I can get it through there. So it's coming out right there. So I'm going to take my blue pipe cleaner. That's going to be one of the vena cavas. And poke it through right there. And that blood's gonna travel through the atrium, down in the ventricle, just like I did from the other one. I'm gonna go from where I was, and I'm gonna go a little bit medial, so towards the center of the heart, to try to find where the blood leaves. Blood always travels from the side, you know, into the ventricle, and then towards the middle to get out of the heart. So I'm gonna see if I can find where it goes. I won't go back through the atrium here. I'm gonna start in the ventricle. It's a little bit kind of behind all of this. So I'm going to push my finger back into there and try to come out on the other side. And then, okay, there I am coming out on the other side. It's a little bit hard to see, but that's where my finger is right there. So I'm going to poke that blue pipe cleaner up through that. That's going to be the pulmonary artery because it's got to get this low oxygen blood out of the heart to the lungs. This is the pulmonary artery. So I'm going to see if I can get this. This one's going to be a little bit hard to get the pipe cleaner through, I think. Let's see if I can get it through there. So one trick that you can do is if you take your tweezers and put the pipe cleaner into the tweezers like that, you can use this as sort of a needle to pull the, the pipe cleaner through like a needle and thread. All right, that took some work but we got it here. So let's take a look and see, remember the blood, whenever you're identifying the blood vessels, always start from the outside and then you'll come out through the middle part. So this, this is gonna be where the blood comes back through one of the vena cavas. The blood will travel into the right, right atrium, then to the right ventricle, and then it's gonna come out through the pulmonary artery, which we've got back on this side. And if I start on just the top of the heart here, I can identify those parts. This is going to be the vena cava, where blood's going to come into the right side of the heart. It's going to come out through the pulmonary artery. Blood's going to return to the part. Remember, you go on the outside towards the inside. So this would be the pulmonary vein, which branches to either side. But it's going to go in through the pulmonary vein and gets pumped out through here through the aorta. All right, so that was how you go through and dissect and identify different parts on the sheep heart and lungs and trachea and everything. There's a lot more to find than just what I pointed out there, but that's a pretty good start for the sheep heart and lungs dissection. Now for cleanup, take the um, paper towel that we started with and go ahead and wrap your specimen in that. Now if it's the last day in the lab, all of this will get thrown away, but if it's not the last day and we're gonna work on this some more, then wrap everything up in these towels and place it all back into the bag. Then grab some tape, we'll tape the bag shut, and then it's preserved and ready to go for next lab day. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the lab.